This is a story of a magical place. A land of beauty, a land of mystery, a land of giants. In the air, in the water, underground, there are lessons to uncover. Very little was known about this species. This is also a land of extremes. Droughts, floods, fires. Survival always at stake in this rare place where people witness wildlife at every turn. Over there, oh, where it's moving. Journey to South America with us as we explore the Pantanal, the largest tropical wetlands in the world. And learn what's being done to protect it. If you don't work with all the species that are here that are important, we're not going to save the Pantanal as it is. The call for help is loud. The time to act is now. You want to build a team of wildlife warriors. Yeah. KPRC2 and the Houston Zoo present Saving Wildlife, Giants of the Pantanal. The Pantanal, home to many different giant species, and you can experience it for yourself right here at the Houston Zoo. Welcome to South America's Pantanal. I'm Owen Conflenti. And I'm Lisa Hernandez. This new beautiful habitat is home to magnificent species you're going to love seeing up close. And what's wonderful is, with every visit, you help save these animals in the wild. And although we're very excited to take you on a tour, the wild is where we'll start. Our colleague Andy Sirota traveled with the Houston Zoo to Brazil last fall. While a lot has changed in the world since then due to widespread wildfires and the coronavirus pandemic, vital conservation efforts in that region continue. And Houstonians are playing a big role in making sure animals are protected in a place that just may be Brazil's best kept secret. Imagine Brazil. You may picture the sand, the surf, iconic images of the country. You'll likely envision dense rainforests and colorful animals. But on this trip, our destination wasn't the beaches or the Amazon. We were bound for a region run by cowboys, a land where cattle graze during the day and giants emerge at night. Some so mysterious, people who've lived here their whole lives don't even know they exist. This is the Pantanal. One year before opening day of the Houston Zoo's newest habitat featuring this important South American ecosystem, we set off on a journey that would take us nearly 5,000 miles away and straight into the heart of the Pantanal. Water washes over the landscape several months of the year, cutting off most access by ground. April through October are the dry season, though, which meant we were able to reach our first destination by road, or should I just say by car? You see, after a while of driving, the paved path into the Pantanal faded into dirt roads. And then no roads, but we continued the bumpy trek forward. At 70,000 square miles, the Pantanal stretches into Bolivia and Paraguay, but the biggest expanse is by far in Brazil, south of the Amazon rainforest. The Pantanal is extremely flat, and that's why it floods, because the water spreads out, and, and so that, that creates this huge floodplain. Obviously, right now, we're going at the end of the dry season. 95% of the Pantanal is privately owned. Massive ranches are passed down from generation to generation. So this is what the Pantanal is all about, cattle ranching. The man navigating the unmarked route is Arnaud Debier. And right now it's really hot. After hours of driving, Arnaud pulled up to a ranch that's now also an eco lodge for tourists and home to a research lab where Arnaud and others are doing groundbreaking work in the field of conservation. It was here we met Danilo Kluiber, a veterinarian, Gabriel Masocato, a biologist, and Hita Coelho Lima Jujulix, the ranch owner. Speaking in Portuguese, the native language in Brazil, 
She told us this land had been in her family since the 1800s. While the cowboys, or pantaneros, look after the cows, sheep, and horses. Kita has found herself in recent years taking care of tourists. The family ranch now bringing in money by bringing in people from all over the world. It's easy to see what draws tourists to this remote place. It's peaceful, pristine, and populated with animals everywhere. And many of those species are giants. Capybara are the world's largest rodent. Jabiru storks are the biggest storks on the planet. Even the anteaters and armadillos here are oversized. And that's what Arnaud, Gabriel, and Danilo are here to study, those giants of the Pantanal. We get a good view of the entrance. It all began a decade ago when Arnaud decided he wanted to save a rare and rarely seen creature, the giant armadillo. An armadillo that can grow up to five feet long, head to tail, and weigh close to 70 pounds. Even after all these years, I, I can't believe that they exist. Arnaud knew he needed a veterinarian. How long have you been coming out here to the ranch? Since 2010. So he called on Danilo to help. Danilo quit his job and the journey began. You took a leap of faith. Yes. The funny thing is that we, both of us, we haven't, we haven't seen the giant armadillo before we started this project. So we had no idea how to find it. They got to work learning how to find giant armadillos. And then in 2012, they added Gabriel to the team. It didn't take long before the Houston Zoo, which supports conservation projects all over the world, Absolutely. recognized what was happening here. And a partnership with the Giant Armadillo Project was formed. And we invest in people that we trust. And I don't just mean invest financially, we invest our own time um, and zoo support in people that we trust. Peter Rieger is vice president of conservation and education for the Houston Zoo and journeyed with us to Brazil as we explored the work happening at the Bahia das Pedras Ranch. Here we have the microscopes, so we prepare uh, the samples here. The nearest city is more than six hours away, so having tools and space to work at the ranch is critical. But before there's anything to look at under the microscope, they first have to track and capture the animals they want to study. Usually to, to collect samples from a new individual is very difficult. We set out hoping to find the burrow of an animal the team had tagged before and hoped to trap again to collect more data. So this morning we're going to go track uh, Gala. She's a young female giant armadillo. And so Gabriel is going to be using the antenna and tried to listen to her signal. Holding a telemetry device in the air as we moved across the land, Gabriel listened for the first sign we might be close. Why is my scared? Arnaud warned us this search could take all day. They may not find her at all because giant armadillos can wander large distances. But then... I have the, the first signal of Gala. Uh, she's in this direction. I know that we are pretty close to 300 meters and we try to, to walk here. Just on the direction. other side of this fence? Yes, other side. Okay. okay. Oh, Let's go. So, she's there. She's there. She's sleeping there. She's sleeping there? Yes. So here we have uh, the giant armadillo burrow. This is where we'll be setting our trap um, to try to capture her tonight when she comes out. Giant armadillos are strictly nocturnal. At night, giant armadillos emerge to feast on ants and termites. They're primarily solitary creatures. So the burrow is over there, but you're keeping us over here, why? So we're keeping everybody a little bit further on because of the smell. Giant armadillos, they have very poor vision, but they have a fantastic sense of smell. And so any, any smell will make her more reluctant to come out tonight. On our trip, they tracked Gala to this burrow. But as the team's research evolves, they hope to next learn where she travels. What we're going to put on her um, tomorrow is a GPS. Mm -hmm. And that's only, that only um, is activated when they're outside of the burrow. Thanks to their research, they already know when she moves on. Her abandoned enclosure may offer protection and food for other animals. Cameras the team has set up over the years show more than 70 other species using the burrows. They're a window into the animal's life 
And it was through these cameras that we, we were able to document the role of giant armadillos as ecosystem engineers. And what that means is that other animals are using giant armadillo burrows as a refuge against temperatures, a refuge against predators, or sometimes as a place to find food. Because mm -hmm. you can see in this fresh sand there are different uh, invertebrates. So they often get house guests. We say that giant armadillos provide homes for other species. We watched as the team prepared the trap. When they leave the burrow, they just keep going, keep walking, and then they're gonna push this, this ring here. So when they push it, the door closes. So we just set the giant armadillo trap, and now we have to wait until tonight. With hopes high, we might soon see the mysterious animal hidden underground. We worked our way back to Hita's lodge, where it's clear she's as much part of the giant armadillo project as anyone. Rita, who was born and raised on the ranch, had never seen a giant armadillo before the project. And she's been fascinated and loved learning about the species. But thanks to her, we have also learned so much about uh, managing land and management practice that can sustain uh, everything we see around us. Rita says she's happy to support the team's research. It fits in with the Pantanero's desire to save the land. It helps bring in more tourists, and it holds a special place in her heart. When you hold this picture and you look at it, what do you think about it? I had never seen a giant armadillo free in the wild. That was the first giant armadillo captured, and we all were amazed. Since the beginning of the project, a sign was added to the wall of the lab tallying the number of people who've now seen a giant armadillo at Bahia das Pedras. As the sun set, we hoped we'd soon get to change that number. Still to come, the team gets more than they expected when they check the giant armadillo trap. Last night, I think, was one of the most incredible nights we've had on the project. But first, the threats to survival in the Brazilian wetlands come from more than just predators. And later, so that was truly amazing. We just saw what sends boats racing down the river. First, you see that large nest right over my shoulder? It's built to resemble the nest of the giant Jabiru stork. Once they build a nest, they come back to the same exact one year after year. In the Pantanal, our team saw four chicks in one nest, eagerly waiting for a meal of eel. A full-grown Jabiru can stand four and a half feet tall and have a wingspan of more than eight feet. Stay with us for more Saving Wildlife, the Giants of the Pantanal, next. The Pantanal habitat here at the Houston Zoo stretches 4.2 acres, giving a wide variety of animals space to move around. In this grassland portion, you'll see an array of species that our team also saw in Brazil, like capybaras. These massive rodents can stay underwater for up to five minutes. You can spot the males by the bump above their nose. There are tapers, which can grow to more than six feet long and weigh between 330 and 700 pounds. They use their unique nose to reach for things or even as a snorkel in the water. And there's the rhea, a four foot tall flightless bird that's related to the ostrich. The females can lay up to 50 eggs, but it's the males that sit on the eggs and raise the chicks. There are even recreations of the large termite mounds that dot the landscape of the Pantanal. It's pretty amazing, and what's even more special is you can help the zoo's effort to save these giant creatures just by bringing your family here for a visit. Andy Sirota has more on the program to protect giant anteaters in the Pantanal. Arnaud Debier found himself ready to add another chapter to his conservation story after encounters with a different one of Brazil's giant species. Here we were working the Pantanal, struggling, unable to catch a giant armadillo. And as we were doing this in the field, here I would see their, their cousins walking right by me. Giant armadillos and giant anteaters are part of the super order Xenarthra. So we decided to work with giant anteaters because I felt that studying giant anteaters, I would learn more about the giant armadillo. And so we started collaring animals, learning more about them, and, and of course becoming fascinated and enamored with the species. Enamored with a species that's six to eight feet from head to tail, its outstretched tongue amazingly adds another two feet. At the Houston Zoo, it's easy to see the giant anteaters wandering slowly with their big fluffy tails and that extended snout. Unfortunately, in Brazil, 
the only giant anteater we saw was proof of one of the biggest problems the species faces. Development for agriculture and roads and the traffic that brings are among the reasons giant anteaters are classified as vulnerable to extinction. And this species cannot sustain that, that kind of massacre. They produce one pup a year. How, how is this possible? We thought we have to do something. And that's when the Anteaters and Highways project was born. So since 2017, we've been studying um, the impact of roads on, on giant anteaters. And we've already registered over 600 of these carcasses on our roads here in Mato Grosso do Sul. 600? 600. That's a staggering number. We can only notice the animals that die really at the edge of the road. So much more of the animals are being killed that we don't even notice. <laughs> so we've put collars on 45 giant anteaters on three in three different highways. We monitor now 1,300 kilometers of road every two weeks. The Houston Zoo provides funding for salaries and training for biologists and veterinarians working on the Anteaters and Highways project. They also have supplied camera traps and tracking collars. Reflective tape on the collars is one method of helping the animals be seen by drivers. But the Anteaters and Highways team is thinking bigger as they consider all the possible ways to reduce the risk along the road. What is the goal with this program? It's implementing mitigation measures to prevent this from happening. And what's really important is this is not an issue only for biodiversity, it's also about human safety. That's so what we got here. It's a taper, a South American taper. This is Patty's whole life. Arno is talking about Patricia Medici, founding member of the Institute for Ecological Research and also leader of the Lowland Taper Conservation Initiative. The Houston Zoo's first conservation project in Brazil began with her almost 20 years ago when she was working in a region of the country known as the Atlantic Forest. And so the Houston Zoo has been on board since the very beginning, since the first site, and I expanded to the Pantanal, they came with me. I expanded to the to the Cerrado, the Houston Zoo was on board, and I, we're now expanding to the Amazon. It's it's a real partner, and we collaborate in so many different, you know, fronts. She tracks them, much like we've heard about with the giant armadillo and the giant anteaters, um, and she follows their movements. She determines where they're going, what their territories are. With the information she collects, Patty's developing conservation strategies for tapers based on the biggest threats in each region. Threats like traffic, poaching, or development, which restricts the taper's ability to move around. 2020 has brought additional challenges. Everybody has to live with the fact that there will be no tourism in the Pantanal this year. The COVID-19 pandemic first brought tourism to a halt. Then came another hit, fire. Fires are set every year to clear land for agricultural use. But this year, they've raged out of control creating a catastrophic environment for wildlife. There's uh, rescue teams and uh, lots of veterinarians from all over the country in the northern Pantanal at the moment, uh, trying really hard to rescue as many animals as possible. And, uh, and tapers is just one of the species that have been suffering. It's a whole different scale, so we don't, nobody really knows if the Pantanal will regenerate or not. We have to wait until the end of this nightmare and then we'll be able, we'll find out. Taper survival may be one of the keys to the Pantanal bouncing back. The animals eat a lot of fruit and travel far distances. And as they move about uh, their home range, they defecate those seeds. So we call tapers the gardeners of the forest. They play almost as critical a role, if not more so, than the giant armadillo that we've heard so much about. So one plants the forest and the other one provides burrows in the forest. So you can almost see how all these species are connected. A female taper only has a baby about every two years. The young are born with stripes and spots to help them blend into the surroundings. But even with that protection, they need people like Patty fighting to keep them alive. Patty is extremely determined. She is extremely tough and unwavering when it comes to tapers. Right now, she's tackling some really tough issues such as pesticides or roadkill. As the leaders of two major conservation efforts in Brazil, who both do research out of Bahia das Pedras, Patty and Arnaud discuss their work often. How often are you collaborating? <laughs> 
Not very often, actually, because we have kids and we have to take turns. So we never get to go to the field uh, together. We talk. We talk a lot. These colleagues in conservation are also husband and wife, and the respect they have for each other is evident. I'm very proud of Patricia, very proud. Patty is an inspiration to me. She's been a mentor to a lot of the work I've been doing. I really respect the work that Arno has done and everything they do to, to study these animals. It's super tough. They need to have this kind of attention. Otherwise, they will just, you know, get lost in the middle of so many other species that if they don't have a champion, uh, they're going to just disappear. And he's their champion. He is, <laughs> very much so. Next, a champion for giant armadillos gets a win. This is a big moment for all of you. It's a huge moment. Then later, witness the largest species of freshwater otter in the world do what it does best, hunt. And when you can, come see them for yourself for the first time ever, right here at the Houston Zoo. Their water repellent fur and nostrils and ears that close underwater all help this effective predator catch up to nine pounds of fish a day. Stick around to see how your zoo admission ticket or gift shop purchase is helping save these giants of the Pantanal. Meet Millie, a three-banded armadillo who lives here at the Houston Zoo. In Brazil, our team spotted six banded armadillos running through the grass, and across Texas, you may have seen the nine-banded variety wandering about. There are several types of armadillos, but only one kind of armadillo that can build a burrow up to five feet deep. You won't find the mysterious giant armadillos in a zoo, so every time the Houston Zoo's partner in the Pantanal uncovers new information about them, it's a giant win for wildlife. Arno, when we first saw you this morning, we were so enthusiastic. Why? Because last night, I think, was one of the most incredible nights we've had uh, on the project in, these, in the, almost the past 10 years. Uh, when we went to capture this adult female, we knew that she had a sub-adult uh, young, but we didn't think it was in the burrow. And so when we caught Gayla last night, we put her in, uh, in the box, and then Gabriel went back just to check on the burrow, and to our amazement and surprise, there was the baby, who's not that much of a baby anymore. Nine months to maybe one year. It was absolutely wonderful. Even in a place where Arnaud sees animals every day. So we have a, a kwati, which is foraging right at the edge of the water. Seeing a giant armadillo is rare. Finding a juvenile is even more special. Really didn't make their night. It could have made their year. That we happened to be here is a little bit lucky, but it's a lot of, about hard work that led them to being able to do that. We will process one animal at a time. Daniel will apply um, an anesthetic. The team started with the adult female armadillo. This helps us monitor her heart rate and oxygen levels. Taking vitals and measurements. We also monitor her temperature, and we're always looking at her breathing. I have 13 centimeters, 13 centimeters here. So the third claw of giant armadillos is gigantic. It can be larger than the claw of a polar bear. And they use this powerful claw to break and destroy termite mounds. Termite mounds are hard, almost as hard as cement. And then they use this back paw to shovel it out. Look at this dinosaur looking back paw. They washed the spot where the GPS transmitter would soon be attached. So I'm cleaning it out. Taking every precaution to protect the animal's health. A short time later, the transmitter was in place. So these devices were recently purchased for us by the Houston Zoo. And in addition to locations, they also have activity data. So we will find out if she's active during the day when she's underneath her burrow. So this is a whole new world of data that we will be gathering. Today, the Houston Zoo is our, the, our largest donor for the project. The support goes beyond money. We get help with staff capacity building, proposal writing, communication, education, and they also are very good at sharing the ideas um, and the work that is done by their other partners in other parts of the world. The Houston Zoo has sponsored Gabriel's work since 2013, and then a few years ago presented him with a Wildlife Warrior Award, which allowed him to spend a month in Houston developing his conservation skills even more. So how do you feel about that? Very happy. <laughs> if we keep the giant amadillo in the area, we are help other animals. He is now, thanks to the Houston Zoo, been sponsored to be part of the Emerging Wildlife Conservation Leadership Program. 
And that's a two-year program where he's getting leadership skills, which he applies every day now. Gabriel communicates the team's work to partners, landowners, and community members. You want to build a team of wildlife warriors. Yeah. <laughs> and that's happening thanks to what the team is doing here at the ranch. Word spread that a giant had been brought back to the lab, and people began to stop by. Come and meet Gayla. This is a adult female giant armadillo. She weighs 33 kilograms. She's the mother, and we have her youngster with us. Giant armadillos only have one pup at a time and likely go three years before having another. That's why threats like hunting, pesticide contamination, and habitat loss can be so devastating. Giant armadillos can easily go extinct in any areas due to human impacts. Fortunately, Arnaud has found the Pantaneros also want to protect their home and everything in it. So Chon, is it Andy? So Sio Chong has been here his whole life. And when I started the project here at Baidas Pedras, Sio Chong was the person that, that I started to work with. But he also had never seen a giant armadillo before. And the first time they ventured out, Arnaud admits they made a mistake. We found a giant armadillo track, and Sio Chong was able to track it for over two kilometers. But when giant armadillos go deep into their burrows, they throw sand back and they close the entrance of the burrow. But I didn't know that. So when we arrived at this burrow and it was all closed up with sand, we thought, okay, well, this is blocked, this is closed, there's nothing here. See, we didn't even set a camera trap, we just thought we made a mistake and we left empty-handed. Together, they have since learned a lot. The droughts, the, 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 the animals, the wildlife, he understands it all. Arnaud wants more people to understand. And that's why he's eager for others to experience his favorite species. Once mom was safely back in a box, the team got to work on the younger giant. Does she look healthy? She looks wonderful. She's absolutely adorable. You can see she's healthy, she's pudgy, she, she's just perfect. The last time we caught a baby was Alex in 2014. And Alex lived to be a, almost two years old when he got predated by a puma. So his story was cut short and we're really excited because this animal is going to help us continue that story it's really lucky and with that luck we added ourselves to the wall when the temperature had fallen later in the day the giant armadillos were loaded onto trucks then driven back to the burrow you expecting her to go straight down the hole it's, it's really unpredictable so we need to be close to be able to guide it Arnaud moved the baby to mom's box, and then it was time for these mysterious mammals to head back underground. The young armadillo scurried out of the box and into the burrow first. Then... And her mother is coming in, and she's going to close the burrow. What's going through your mind right now? Well, it's very exciting because we think of everything we're going to learn. We're going to learn about the relationships between mother and baby. When is this youngster going to leave its mother? So it's a whole new chapter that's opening. From the ranch to the river. We've been traveling down the Cuyaba River, which runs 300 miles. But you don't have to go that far to see wildlife like that. The most fierce predators of the Pantanal are still ahead. Take action to save wildlife at home, work, or school. The Houston Zoo has several easy ways you can make a big difference. Visit HoustonZoo.org to learn more. A jaguar prowling above. Giant river otters splashing below. Every detail of this new habitat at the Houston Zoo was designed to resemble what you would see if you took a trip to the Pantanal. Even the night houses for the animals are made to look like the eco lodges in Brazil. As you've heard, ecotourism is an important source of revenue for people there. So after leaving the ranch, Andy Sirota flew to his next stop in the Pantanal, a place where wildlife sends people racing down the river. Our journey in a small plane over the Pantanal landed us right outside our next lodge. Our cabins set back just feet from the river that provides for both wildlife and the livelihoods of countless families who bank on it for income. In the heat of the afternoon, we eagerly headed to the dock to board a boat and venture out on the 300-mile-long Cuyaba River. Our goal? To find giant otters, giant snakes, 
and the biggest wildcat in the Americas, the Jaguar. With an ecotourist guide and a skilled boat driver, our hopes were high. We'd get our first look at these top predators of the Pantanal. It didn't take long. We've been on the water less than 30 minutes and we've already seen one anaconda along the banks of the river here. A glimpse in the brush of a snake that can remain well hidden in spite of its size. A yellow anaconda like the one we saw grow up to 15 feet and weigh up to 80 pounds. The larger green anaconda, which you can see at the Houston Zoo, has been said to grow up to 30 feet. While it's not the longest snake in the world, their weight can range from 150 pounds to 400 pounds or more, making them the heaviest. What are their prey? What are they hunting? Whatever it's moving. Well, when an anaconda with three, four meters, they can eat one of us by one bite. An anaconda that's three or four meters can eat a person our size, Yes. my he, size. He can open the jaw and swallow you by one bite. Swallow me in one bite. While it's possible, anaconda aren't known for going after people. Deer, caiman, and capybaras are more appealing to this massive reptile. With threats like that, these capybara are always on guard. They have to notice before the predators are there. While not a threat to the capybara, we spotted one of the most fierce predators on the river, a family of giant river otters. These guys can grow up to six feet long, weigh up to 75 pounds, and have teeth and claws capable of ripping apart prey. They are like torpedoes on the water. With powerful tails and webbed feet, these giants ease through the waters. They have little babies there, two or three little giant otters. That's the baby calling for mama. Mama is back here. The giant otters stick with their family group, hunting together, raising their pups together, defending their territory together. This cell phone video shows the otters aggressively chasing off a caiman who got too close to their youngsters. People on the water don't seem to phase the otters, which, like many animals, have grown used to tourists. Tourists who fill boats with binoculars and cameras eager to see all the animals. But it's one in particular that gets every boat racing. So we got a hot tip, two jaguars on a beach downriver from where we are, so we're headed there right now. Fifteen minutes later... There they are. You can see them both walking along the bank. We watched in awe as two male jaguars made their way down the river. Our two brothers. Joining the other tourist boats in a well-practiced game of leapfrog, taking turns passing behind each other as we moved along the water giving everyone a chance at the perfect picture. As soon as they come into a clearing, you can hear the snaps of the cameras going off. It's rare for males to stay together. Most compete for territory and for female jaguars. While this pair was expected to split up soon, on this day, the brothers were staying close, moving through the brush and swimming through the water one after the other keeping a steady pace until they spotted something they wanted. A missed meal for the brothers, another day of life for the capybaras. Survival, it's what you witness on the river every day. You notice the horse fly on the head. Why are they swarming his head like that? For blood. For blood, for food, from small pests to big predators, every species doing what they need to survive. As the jaguars continued down the river at dusk, we headed back to the dock, energized by the thought of what the next full day on the water could bring. Next, another day on the water brings the unexpected. Well, that was cool. We don't, you don't normally see that, that's for sure. Plus, more to discover from Andy's jaguar encounters. We're told the jaguar over there on the riverbank is likely pregnant. Once the cubs are born, they'll stay with their mother for about a year as they learn how to hunt and survive along the river. And later, we'll take you inside the impressive aviary you can walk through the next time you're at the zoo. But first, take a peek at all the cool animals hanging out around here. You've got the howler monkeys, the red-rumped agouti, plus one-pound tamarins. 
Golden lion tamarins were nearing extinction until zoos worked together to breed the tiny monkeys for release into protected forests. The population in the wild is now thriving. Stay tuned to learn more about Brazil's awesome animals, big and small, next. So we're zipping along pretty fast right now. What's going on? Where are we going? We just got a radio call that a caiman is eating an anaconda. Not very common, so that's why we're trying to get there fast as we can. We've got a caiman eating an anaconda, but it doesn't always work out that way. No, sometimes it could be the other way around. Sometimes you can get the anaconda eating the caiman. It really just depends on size. This one is believed to be a meter long. Yeah, that's what the first boat that arrived here saw it. Uh, they said that the anaconda was about a meter, and they had been watching it for about an hour. We just caught the tail end. Literally. Literally. <laughs> well, that caiman probably wouldn't have had that easy of a meal had the anaconda been full size. Here at the Houston Zoo, you can really see how this giant of the Pantanal stacks up. Of course, smaller reptiles and amphibians are here to represent the region, too. When you visit, be on the lookout for the emerald tree boa and the vibrant and colorful poison dart frogs. Colors and patterns are key ways animals protect themselves from predators or stay camouflaged as they stalk prey. And that's true for jaguars too, which are the third largest cat in the world behind lions and tigers. While they are among the world's biggest cats, jaguars like Tesoro are often mistaken for cheetahs or leopards. If you check out their coats, you can tell the difference. Cheetahs have solid spots, leopards are covered in small rosette shapes, and jaguars have larger rosettes on their fur with spots inside them. The jaguar's coat pattern, which is unique to each animal, has made them a target for hunters. Fortunately, more and more people are now seeing the value in keeping them alive. Jaguars are what draw boatfuls of tourists to the Pantanal in a typical year. Tourists eager to see the beauty and power of these animals, power that's evident with every move. While jaguars have been targeted in the past for their coats or the threat they pose to livestock, unfortunately, in 2020, these kings of the Pantanal have faced a threat that raged out of control. And even through the smoke, one woman maintains a clear picture of what it will take to save their home. I see the jaguar as a way to protect the Pantanal because humans love big cats. And if we can save the jaguar, because this is a haven for jaguars, I think we can, you know, save the Pantanal. American Abigail Martin first came to the Pantanal as a volunteer, eager to learn about jaguars. She's now leading the charge to save them. So where are we right now? Right now we're in the Encantos das Aguas State Park. Encantos das Aguas means the meeting of the waters. So here we have three major rivers, uh, the Cuiaba River, the Three Brothers River, and the Black Channel coming together. In recent months, Abby has actively worked to raise awareness about the destruction caused by this year's fires, all while continuing to focus on the project that has her rooted in Brazil. Her nonprofit Jaguar Identification Project has transformed research along the river. You can't be everywhere at once to document what's right. taking place. How important is it to you to have volunteers or sort of a network of people that can be your eyes and ears from time to time. Right, this is uh, very important to the project. Um, like you said, I can't be everywhere. And even if I am in the river, there's so many different channels and so many different jaguars. So if people follow the project or if I have boat drivers or guides and tourists helping, this way we can get a lot more data in a much more shorter time. Data that's being delivered right to her through technology. We use social media, email, and all that stuff uh, to get photos. And then we have a database with 156 different individuals. And then we have one photo and basically ID the Jaguar. Today, many of these cameras, they have GPS coordinates. You have the time and date, and you have the individual. And through the photo, you have the behavior. So right there, you have a whole bunch of information just from one photo. We also count how many boats are in the river with a given Jaguar, how much time they're staying there with them. Uh, to see like how much money is one individual Jaguar bringing to this area. Increasing income and knowledge are critical to saving animals here, like the Jaguar. They're important to the region. It's what Brazil is known for, its amazing biodiversity. 
But on a day-to-day -day basis, people have to fish and people have to live and people have to go to work and they have to make money. We want to help those communities realize they don't have to live in conflict with those species. And then by living side by side with them, they can be an economic driver for their livelihoods. It's working, but the success didn't happen overnight. I'm a foreigner and a woman. So it was kind of like, who's this girl, this gringa coming in this area to name our jaguars? And now people are, see people are seeing that like it actually works and the tourists love it. And the, the boat drivers are more accepting of it. So it, it makes me really happy to see that it's working. More accepting of it and more it, accepting and of you. me, yeah, I think. Because I'm one of the only women boat drivers here. So at first it was kind of hard, but now I think I'm way more accepted into the area. I feel like I'm almost a Pantanera. Having their trust means she can learn and track more jaguars, like the brothers we saw. Shandu's cross-eyed. Uh, Boro's got a lighter coat. We've been watching them since they're cubs. We know who their mother is, is Kira. Um, and they're about three and a half years old. Typically, jaguars will leave their mother at 15 months, but they'll stay within their mother's territory. Uh, after this, after two years, they'll go into find their own territory. So these brothers have actually found their own territory, but they're, they haven't split. It's unusual. And we don't know if it's unusual because it, it is unusual or if it's because we've never actually been able to observe jaguars like this in the wild. Observing jaguars is part of the magic on the river. Some days you may see them resting. The next, you may witness a battle for territory. Occasionally, you may see two of the river's top predators come face to face. Jaguars don't typically uh, prey on otters, and otters don't prey on jaguars. They're both apex predators, one of the river and one of the land. But when they come together, they do fight. It's just crazy that they haven't changed dens. Here at this den in September 2019, tourists witnessed one of those rare confrontations when a jaguar went after a giant otter cub and the otters fought back. Boy, those otter made a lot of noise. You showed yeah, me that video. Yeah, they're very loud. What was going on there? In that yeah, area? so the cubs were just starting to come out of the den. We actually have a camera trap set up in that den. We, we call this family Jaguar family because this one known uh, jaguar, Agi, has been harassing this family for a long time. The otters were on the bank and the otters didn't see the jaguar yet, so she jumped down and grabbed one, but the otters family attacked the jaguar bit her all over. She dropped the baby, but unfortunately, uh, the baby was already dead. The jaguar has the most powerful bite. While jaguar research is what drew Abby to the Pantanal, she now also plays a role in the Giant Otter Project, an initiative supported in part by the Houston Zoo. So jaguars clearly are a reason people come here. We want to put giant otters and other species that live in this region on that same map so that overall all species together are, are included in that value. If you want a great experience, try following a family of giant otters up and down the river. And so that's what we did on our trip, followed and experienced the speed and power of some very hungry predators. Otter after otter chowing down on armored catfish. It has an exoskeleton, a very hard exoskeleton. That's why we can hear it crunching. crunching. The Giant Otter Project studies the different families and can identify the individual otters by the fur on their throat. The throat pattern here, there's a white patch and each one is unique. They are identifying the giant otters that live in this region. Right now they're following five family groups and then working on what we would call a citizen science project to work with the local tour guides as well as the researchers following themselves to get a better handle on how those groups are doing. Camera trap footage also helps record the otters routines. How important is having a camera trap very important. in their line of work? Yeah, very important, especially for the otters because we can see exactly what time they're leaving the den, what time are they bringing the cubs out. They're clearly very curious and playful creatures. How would you describe them? Fun. I think the best way to describe otters is fun. It seems like it's a good life. <laughs> In spite of being very social animals, if environmental conditions like recent fires keep families of otters apart, unable to breed, then their existence in the future is in jeopardy. But we have to remember that this species is actually more endangered and needs more protection than the jaguar. Giant otters were once killed because of their effectiveness at catching fish. 
in the past, I think uh, the otter was hunted a lot by the fishermen as seen as a um, you know, competition for fish. Uh, but now these fishermen are starting to work with uh, tourism, driving the boats. I think the role of the otter now is to is bringing in income for the local people and they're kind of changing their views uh, of, of an otter. Through workshops hosted by the Giant Otter Project, boat drivers and guides learn how to keep a safe distance from the animals, as well as gain an understanding of how otters communicate. Each vocalization means a different thing. So you can actually tell when they're comfortable, when they're hungry, when they're alarmed, when they're stressed. And the way, when they're really stressed, they'll come into like a pack and make a certain noise. So this means give space, you're too close. Protecting them from man-made threats means the otters can focus on protecting themselves from the natural hazards of the animal kingdom. She's looking for the jaguar maybe. She's proceeding with caution. Yeah, you see how the tail's flat in the back? Yeah. But yeah, this family has to be very cautious, especially using this den. With more people seeing the value in protecting the otters, progress is being made toward saving all of the giants of the Pantanal. It's amazing. Even talking to the local Pantaneros about it, they're like, they, they want people to see their Pantanal, you know. This is a, it's a wonderful place, and if it's the otter, if it's the jaguar that's going to bring the world here, then they're welcoming it with, with open arms. Ahead, hope for the future, thanks to the little acts that make a giant difference for wildlife. If you come to the zoo, you're saving animals in the wild. If you come to Brazil, you're saving animals in the wild. Or whatever you do that's good for the environment, we want everybody to feel like there's something they could do. But first, there's still so much to see here in this new exhibit. You're definitely going to want to stop and check out the blue-billed curacao. The Houston Zoo is working to breed and save these critically endangered birds. In here with them are the blue-throated macaws. The zoo also has green-winged macaws and blue and yellow macaws. These macaws are large. But the biggest parrot found in the Pantanal is the stunning hyacinth macaw, whose numbers in the wild have been impacted by habitat loss and being trapped and sold as pets. When not threatened, these beautiful blue birds can live 30 to 50 years. Saving wildlife, Giants of the Pantanal continues next. Birds are among the most abundant animals to see in Brazil, and the variety is quite impressive. That's why the Houston Zoo has created two brand new aviaries. There's the wetlands aviary, which features wading birds. And the savanna aviary, which you can walk through and see colorful birds fly all around. It's an experience families will love, and just by coming to see it yourself, you'll be supporting the Houston Zoo's conservation effort in Brazil and around the world. The Houston Zoo's conservation work spans the globe with partners saving gorillas in Rwanda, elephants in Borneo, lemurs in Madagascar, and sea turtles and Houston toads in Texas. Projects continue with species in two dozen countries. The Houston Zoo is supporting so many, so many wonderful researchers, conservationists. It is critical that the community in Houston continues to support the zoo. Even amid the pandemic, they're collaborating and connecting with partners virtually. Hi everyone, how are you? I am Gabriel Masocato. With the zoo's help, the team in Brazil is spreading the word about the wildlife they want to save. I think that's the, the most important challenge we have, is to make this species known. Progress is being made, thanks in part to zoo guests who help just by coming to the zoo. And I hope some of the people that go to the Houston Zoo and see this exhibit will be like, like I want to go to the Pantanal now. In the Pantanal, the Giant Otter Project is teaching children in rural schools about the giant species. And Gabriel is also leading education efforts to inspire the next generation of conservationists. Our program is now very focused on education, uh, and we work with over 200 schools here in Mato Grosso do Sul. Arno and Patty want children, like their own, to grow up appreciating nature, getting out in it, valuing it. Reconnect with nature. Go out, go outdoors, go, you know, go hiking, go swimming, go to a waterfall, go to the beach, go to the garden behind your house. Just reconnect. As the zoo prepares to celebrate its 100th year in Houston, families will discover more ways to reconnect. Last year, a new Texas wetlands habitat opened for guests. In 2022, your family can explore the Galapagos with sea lions, sharks, and giant tortoises. 
The Pantanal is the most recent completed phase of the zoo's centennial transformation. I was absolutely impressed. Just days after we returned from Brazil last fall, Arnaud flew into Houston to be part of a fundraiser, a gala. You'll recall he called the giant armadillo we tracked with him, Gala. That was a temporary name. A donor at the zoo fundraiser won the chance to name her. She's now Bianca. And Bianca's baby? Her name is Sarah, named after another longtime member of the Houston Zoo team, Peter's wife. A gesture of gratitude after a special trip where we witnessed the giant armadillo team's hope for the future. Personally, it was special for me but it's definitely special for the zoo that the Houston Zoo got to be part of this and document part of this that's going to live forever on the KPRC documentary. I wish and hope that Houstonians can get a little bit of the awe and wonder and, and just amazement that we feel here. I realize that they are a part of, you know, the story of the giant armadillo. Thank you so much. A lot of exciting chapters are still ahead for the Houston Zoo and for all the zoo's partners all over the world. From KPRC and the Houston Zoo, thank you for exploring the Pantanal with us and for taking action to save wildlife. Have a good night. Capers can spray urine backwards 7 to 10 feet. Want to be on TV? <laughs> Thank you for traveling with us. I'd like to let your viewers know he's not that much taller than me. I am standing at the bottom of a hill. <laughs> there are no two days of the same, right? Exactly. It's a Pantanal. It's amazing. <laughs>